In this presentation, we will discuss the planning stage of the audit. In prior presentations, we broke down the audit process. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it into a series of stages, those stages including client acceptance and continuance, preliminary engagement activities, plan the audit, consider and audit internal controls, audit business processes and related accounts, complete the audit and then evaluate results and issue the audit report. Here we of course are on planning of the audit. We'll start off with audit strategy. The overall audit strategy will help the auditor to determine what resources are needed to complete the engagement. As we think of each audit, remember that each audit is going to be substantially different. So we want to have know what the audit strategy will be. We want to make sure within the planning phase, we do a good job because that's going to set the groundwork to make sure that the resources that we need are there and that we apply them efficiently and go through the process of the audit as quickly and efficiently as possible. Audit plan. An audit plan is then developed in more detail than the strategy. So first, of course, we're going to think of the overarching strategy. You can think of us trying to put this framework together. First, we're thinking about the overarching strategy. Then we're starting to frame this thing. We're actually putting together the, the plan, the plan being more concrete, the plan being closer to a blueprint that we can then follow in a step-by-step -step mapped out type process as opposed to the strategy not quite at the blueprint type level not quite listing out exactly what's going to be happening however getting to that point so the audit plan and audit plan is then developed in more detail than the strategy should plan how to conduct the engagement in an effective and efficient manner and of course that's always going to be what we want to do in the planning phase we want to set it up in such a way that we have the steps followed out we know what to expect we believe we know what to expect and we're going to set up a strategy to go through those noting any types of areas that are going to be more time consuming than others making sure that we have them aligned in such a way that we can complete them as efficiently as possible possibly putting together different types of tests that can test different things at the same time and lining up more time frame that will be needed for those areas that we know will be more difficult and more time consuming. The planning steps include assess the business risk. So we're going to say, what is the business risk? Establish materiality levels. We'll discuss more about what the establishment of materiality levels are. But note, we're always going to have to be thinking that we're not going to have the 100% assurance. There's always going to be some risk. There's going to be some risk. And therefore, we need to calculate what the materiality risk would be, which is a little strange because we're actually calculating what would be acceptable uh, amount of degree of risk or amount of error in terms of materiality in order to plan the audit. So we'll discuss a little bit more of how to do that. Consider the need for specialists. Do we need specialists? Of course, we are the auditors. We're specialized in accounting. There's going to be specialists possibly that will be needed in terms of database specialists. How do they put things together? How are they formatting things from an IT perspective? Possibly specialists in, in order to value different types of assets such as real estate, such as different types of inventory or something like that. We need to make sure that we have those specialists that will be needed for those particular areas. Identify any related parties. So are there related parties to this entity? We know that if there are related parties, then they have transactions between the related parties. We can't rely on the market forces to be guiding what we expect from those transactions. And therefore, we need to know who the related parties are, what type of transactions you have with them, and then how you're recording those transactions. Are they recorded in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles as they apply to related parties? Evaluate additional value added services and document overall audit strategy, audit plan, and prepare audit program. So once we have all this, of course, then we're going to put together and document the strategy we're putting together, the plan we're putting together. We want to do that for a couple different reasons. One, we want to make sure the plan is put together so that we can then follow it. We can delegate out to the rest of the people that will be involved in the audit, what that plan will be, and then execute. 
And then of course we also want to know this because it's part of the documentation for the audit. If we were to have some review of the audit or to look at our process that we have done either ourselves or by some review body, we want to be able to show, hey, this is our strategy. This is our plan. Here's the documentation for it. And here's us moving forward with it. Assess business risk to understand the entity and its environment. So we want to assess the business risk and we want to understand the entity and the environment. Now, as we get into risk, note what we're doing. We're looking at the planning process here. We're trying to set up the audit. We're trying to say and ultimately say what types of testing do we need? How much testing do we need? And in order to do that, we have to think about these ideas of risk. So we're going to say, what are the risk factors? And the risk factors will help us determine how to set up the audit, how much time it will take to do the audit, and uh, how much work or what types of work and or what types of work we're going to have to put together for it. We would like to do this in like as scientific a method as possible and tell us, well, this is the level of risk we have here. And that's going to determine how much testing we have to do. Uh, on A, B, C, or D. And that's, we're gonna try to do it as no numerically as possible, but of course, assessing risk in something like the business risk in a business environment, understanding the entity and the environment is somewhat of an art form as well as a science. So note that we're gonna have to uh, get a feel for the understanding of the entity and the environment. Our goal then is to assess the business risk within that entity, within that environment, and that'll help us better understand and set up how much testing is going to be necessary as we go through the audit process to identify business risks uh, that could result in material misstatement. This is our objective. As we consider the business risks, we're saying what type of environment are they in? Uh, what type of, of entity are we dealing with? And then w for, for our purposes, we're saying could these type of entities and the environment they're in lead to a higher risk of material misstatement in the financial statements. And obviously some industries are more highly complicated. Some industries are more risky just in general. Uh, some, some are risky in terms of being a going concern type of risk. And some are just risky or complicated in terms of how they uh, have to put together their business model. And, and those things can increase the likelihood of mistakes and, and problems happening, which would lead to misstatements. Those are the types of things we wanna assess understand how the entity responds to the business risk and ensure response has been done. So the business then should understand their entity, of course, their their environment, what type of environment they're in, what type of business they're in. If they're in a type of business that has a complex type of business structure in order to, to generate the revenue in some way, then of course they know that and they should have a system set up, a system of control set up in order to deal with whatever risk is involved for that particular industry. We wanna understand the risk. We wanna ask the business, how do you deal with this risk and see if they are implementing whatever controls and whatever functions they have in place to deal with that, uh, with that particular risk for that particular type of business entity. Using this information, the auditor assesses the level of risk of material misstatement in the financial statement accounts. So we're gonna use this information, of course, to assess the level of risk uh, in the financial statements of material misstatement, because of course that's our goal when we make the audit is to see whether or not or give an opinion if there's material misstatement. That's what we're going to be gathering evidence for as detectives would. And part of that evidence, pro evidence gathering process in the front side of things is to assess the business risk and put that in as part of our plan. Establish overall materiality. So we're getting back to this idea of materiality. Now note Again, in the planning process, we got to think of materiality because that means that the type of decision that could lead people that are reading or looking at the, at the financial statements to uh, affect their decision. So a, a, a problem with the financial statement that could be large enough that a reasonable person may uh, have their opinion affected if, that is an, if there's an error related to it of that size or something is say omitted of that size. We need to know this in the planning stage and actually work it into our planning process because when we think about things of risk, how much testing we're going to have to do, we have to think about, well, what is an acceptable amount of uh, overall materiality uh, misstatement in essence, which seems again a little bit counterproductive. You would think that we would try to be eliminating all problems and that's going to be our ultimate goal. You might think that we're going to try to shoot for eliminating all uh, misstatements and then, and then whatever we don't get is, is fine. But that's not the way we have to do it. If we're trying to do this efficiently, 
we have to say, okay, what's going to be the material misstatement that would be basically acceptable, that would be under the threshold, and then and then start to plan our process from there. So to do that, then we have to establish things like the overall materiality. So we have to establish tolerable misstatement of accounts and establish tolerable mis misstatement of disclosures. So when we break this down, then when we think about, okay, what would be a reasonable material misstatement that would be tolerable, acceptable, something that uh, if the financial statements were misstated up to this degree, then they were, would not be materially misstated. As we consider that, we could think of the misstatements uh, per account. So we're gonna establish tolerable misstatements for accounts. Then as we start to audit those accounts, we will have a tolerable misstatement that we could work with as we go into those accounts. Same thing is true for establishing tolerable misstatements for the disclosures to the financial statement. Related parties, uh, identification of uh, accounting for and disclosure of transactions with related parties. Note that an entity is related to a reporting entity if among other circumstances, it is a parent, subsidiary, fellow subsidiary, associate, or joint venture. So we're talking about related type of parties in these transactions. And just like if we're talking about individuals and we were related parties to say siblings or something like that, or or family members, then we know that transactions between those related parties are gonna be a mess. They're not gonna follow normal, what we would expect market type of behavior. And therefore we need to know who the related parties are and how are they gonna be recording information to the related parties. So we're thinking about those entities that are related to them. And we know that like family relationships with business transactions are gonna be funny. And so once we know that who the related parties are, we wanna know what the transactions are with them and how those transactions are taking place. So we're gonna inquire about the names of the related parties, the nature of the relationship, uh, the types of transactions with those related parties, reasons for entering into the transactions with the related parties. And again, if we look into these things, obviously the reasons for transactions with related parties could differ substantially than what we would expect for the reasons of transactions for parties that were not related. In other words, if you have a business transaction with a party that's not related to the company, then of course it's probably due to the fact that the company needs revenue generation being the objective in some way, shape or form. We paid for something in order to have revenue generation in some way, shape or form to help us with that process. Related party transactions, it could be a little bit more uh, convoluted as to what was the nature or reason of a particular type of business uh, transaction. And of course, we will document the audit strategy, audit plan, and prepare audit reports. Got document about audit tests. We want the nature, the timing, and the extent. So when we have this documentation, we want to be documenting nature, timing, extent. Document how the entity is managing risk and the effects of the risk on controls on the planned audit process. Audit supervision, engagement partner, and other supervisory members uh, tell the engagement team members their responsibilities, of course. Instruct engagement team members to identify and communicate, communicate audit issues and review the work of engagement team members.